Hi, it's Beth with a little bit of Beth. And again, I'm on retreat in beautiful Mendocino County, working on my business, not working in the busyness of my business. A couple of days ago, I was coaching one of my fantastic executive clients who is moving into a leadership position. She, um, was talking to me about having seen or gotten a copy of the strategic plan that the executive committee at her company came up with. And when she got the executive plan, she went into kind of a tailspin because she said to me, the ideas, the strategies that they came up with, I, I don't think I have the ability to do that. How do I learn to, com to create? strategic plans that look like that. How do I learn to think that big in terms of my company? And what if they realize, oh my gosh, I can't do that. I had to laugh a little bit because one of the pieces that is so um, interesting is that we forget to help people to understand that those types of strategic plans they are not created in a vacuum, particularly when they are the best, most powerful, unbelievable types of strategic plans. And the reason why is because no one of us alone has all of the pieces that need to come together to create that type of work. And so I said, I asked her, I said, how many people do you think are on that leadership committee, that executive committee. She said, oh, I know for a fact there's 10 people that are on that. And so as she said it, she had an awareness. She's like, oh, that's a combination of the 10 brains in the company coming together. And I said, yes, it is. But not only are they coming together, they're negotiating. They're having tough conversations and dialogues. They're identifying when to hold on to an idea, what they want to go to the mat over, and when to let go because it's in the interest of the good of the whole. They're also prioritizing in terms of the three resources that all organizations have. Time, money, expertise, and talent. They're using those as a framework to push things through to say, do we have the talent we need? Do we have the expertise we need for this initiative? Do we have the money that we need to fund it? And if not, what do we want to let go of? How do we want to prioritize this? Or how do we get more money to fund the initiative? And the last one is, how do we want to use our most precious and valuable resource? The one that once it's spent is non-renewable time. How do we want to allocate time for this? And in the allocation of time for this, what opportunities are we willing to let go of? And the most important question of all, I said they're all most important, but that's because they are all most important, all of them. How will we make decisions when new opportunities present themselves around whether we want to add them to the plan or not? Whether they're the right opportunity for us and at this, at this right timing, time, and how will it utilize those three pockets of resources? As we talked about this, she came up with a brilliant idea and, um, and I supported her through the coaching process on this, but it was how can she begin working with the managers on her level in her department to begin holding these types of cross-functional strategic planning sessions for how they're going to utilize the resources, time, money, skills, and expertise to achieve the goals, wow, people can still reach me even in Mendocino, California, to achieve the resources and goals that most need to be taken care of 
uh, to get the things done in their department. So it was a great opportunity, and I love being able to have this dialogue with her. And now the beauty of my work is I get to share her learning with you so that you, too, can begin thinking about how collaboration, co-creation can support you to have a, a bigger, more valuable approach to achieving your goals and solving the problems at your level. All right, that's it. Beth signing off from Mendocino, California.